Welcome to this calculus video. So today I want to present the solution for this problem for you. This problem is very wordy, so I've tried to boil it down to just the essentials here. So in part A, we're going to start with a bond which has initially half a million dollars in it, and it's going to increase at a rate given by this equation here. So this is actually a continuous version of compound interest. So you see that the rate of change of the bond is 20% of the bond's value, and this is given in dollars per year. In the next part, we're actually told to repeat this, but now we're going to add on an expense of $200 per week, and then we're also going to take all the profits at the six-month point and put it into this other uh, scheme, which is actually losing money at about 10% um, per year. So let's rub this out and do the first part. So there are actually several ways to find the solution to this ODE. Uh, firstly, you could note that this is actually a separable equation, so you could use that technique. But actually, I'm going to use the fact that this is first order linear. So I can write it in the following form. And remembering our technique for first order linear equations, we are just going to search for the integrating factor for this. And the integrating factor is just the exponential of the integral of minus 0.2 dt. And if you integrate that, you get e to the minus 0.2 dt. So the whole point of the integrating factor is that if you multiply this equation by the integrating factor, the left-hand side will factor, and this will just be the constant times the integrating factor. Although here it's zero, so we don't see any change. So that's what our integrating factor gives us. And we can easily just integrate both sides of this equation to get the following. And multiplying through by this exponential gives us the full solution that p, function of time, will be a constant times e to the minus 0.2, no, e to the power of 0.2t. Now, we do have this initial condition here that we start with half a million dollars in this bond, so if we plug in p equals, sorry, if we plug in t equals zero, we'll get an equation which will tell us that constant c. So if we look at p at zero, that will be equal to c e to the zero, and of course the exponential of zero is just one, so this is just going to be equal to p zero, which was half a million. So let's just summarize our solution over here. So for part A, we have P of T is equal to half a million times E to 0.2 T. And we were told to work out the money in the bond after one year. So P of 1 is just half a million times e to the 0 0.2 and if we plug that into a calculator we find it's 610701.38 dollars all right so to answer part b we're going to repeat what we did with part a except for now we have this 200 dollars per week expense and we're also going to take the profits at the six month mark and put them in that unprofitable box so the first thing to do is remember that our time scale is years, so I need to convert this $200 per week to a amount of money per year. So for that high car, we're spending, well, it's approximately 52 weeks in a year. So 200 times 52 is $10,400 per year. And well, actually, we can incorporate that into the equation we had before in the following way. So I'm going to take that, the rate of change of this, well, the rate of change of my money with respect to time is going to be equal to 20% of the amount I've left in the bond. And then I'm going to subtract off a constant $10,400 per year. So you can see that if I just had this term here and I integrated the equation out for one year, I would just get this amount here. So this will actually spend the amount of money I need to spend on the car. 
This equation is also separable, so you could try and attack it using separable techniques, but like before, it's also first order linear, so let's just rewrite this and solve it as the same way we did part A. So if I rewrite it, I get this equation here, and as before, this has integrating factor e to the minus 0.2t. So if we multiply by the integrating factor, then this just becomes, and we can easily integrate both sides of this equation to get the following. So note that when I integrate this, I have to divide by minus 0.2, but that's actually the same as multiplying by minus 5, so it's just minus 5 times the previous term. So we can multiply by this function here and just get p of t by itself. And if we now use our initial condition, we can find this constant c. Our initial investment was half a million dollars. Well, plug that into this equation, you get that half a million. Must be equal to 52,000 plus this constant, which means this constant here must be equal to 448,000. Alright, so we can now figure out what our initial bond is doing with that extra expense. So let's use it to work out what, ha what our profits will be at the six month point. So the profits halfway through a year, we'd be at a half, is equal to 52,000 plus 448,000 e to, well, put in a half in here, we get e to the 0 0.1. And again, we can plug that into a calculator to get 547,116.57. So our profit here is actually just going to be this 47,116.57. And we're going to take that and put it into this unprofitable loan, which loses money at 10% per year. Now, if you remember the equation for the unprofitable loan, it's just going to be the, pretty much the same as our first equation, which is going to be dp dt is equal to minus 0.1 d. So this is the same equation that we had before, but instead of a 0.2, we have a minus 0.1. And if you actually think about it, the solution for this is going to be quite simple. It's going to be p of t is equal to p naught e to the minus 0.1 you can easily verify that is the correct solution. So if we just take our 47,000, put it into this equation and run it forward for half a year, so t equals a half, we get the following. So I've just used this solution and I've plugged in t equals a half. And again, you can use the calculator to work that out. It turns out to be about 44,818.5. Well, if we take away all that profit from the bond, we're just going to be left with that original half million in there. And if we run forward six months again, well, that's the same as what's going to happen in the first six months. So after the second set of six months, that bond will have the same amount we have here. It's just going to have that 547,000 around that. And we're going to add that to the money that we have in the other bond. So in total, we will just have the sum of these two numbers, and that is 591,935.24. So that's my answer for part B.